Hello there and welcome to another episode of World of Tanks and Ungainy Titan. Uh, we're here on Ghost Town. Uh, once again I'm in the hammer. I've got the crew from the VK301H. Um, I'm about 70% of the way through on the current skill. Which I think is smooth ride. And I'm hoping to train that up. And then I have about 27,000 XP left in the... VK3001H in order to unlock the 3601H. And I want to complete the crew skill, current training skill, so I'm going to stick this crew with the hammer um, while I do that. And also, I think this game is a bit special. It is um, one of the most exciting games that I've played in quite some time. However, it starts off normal enough. So we're here we are in Ghost Town. Now, Ghost Town is one of these maps, most of the action generally takes place in the middle of the town around the central square where it's kind of um, gun depression central. If you have a strong turret and good gun depression you can do very very well because you can come up here along these ramps up into the central square and just peek over the edge and shoot anybody that's bold enough to come over the top. The problem of course is that people tend to flow along the sides of the central square towards enemy tanks where gaps appear and what happens then is gaps appear in your team and the next thing you are engaged away at a corner or a side street and people sneaking around behind you because the team has either moved on or died behind you and you haven't noticed. So initially I was going to come up this um, road kind of here and then I thought, maybe not. Uh, there's three roads leading into this way, and if I get engaged those tanks there to the north of me, on my left, then uh, while I'm engaging them, if the square is vacated, uh, all the tanks come in from behind me, and I thought, you know, that might be the best plans. Um, that guy is moving there to the east, is isolating himself. So I come to the corner to engage those tanks, and I discover two more tanks. The VK2801, um, Got a decent shot at him there, but didn't actually manage to crypt his engine or track him. And I needed to keep well back. Can't go chasing him because I might reveal my backside to the Sturemil. Although the Sturemil isn't paying attention to me. And that was a bit of a low roll. Now he's got a fairly long aim time, so he's fluffed that shot and missed me. So I've gotten two decent shots into him. I have no idea whether I can beat his reload or not. And I'm concerned about what's going on behind me because, well, there aren't too many tanks behind me. Now the Stuart Meal's withdrawing because, you know, he's got no armor really. Um, I had switched to high explosives because I thought if I can get a decent shot into the superstructure of the Stuart Meal, uh, I can maybe wipe him out with one shot. Get a decent enough roll there, but I don't quite wipe him out. He's not dead yet. But I switched back to regular AP because somebody's peeking the corner and shooting at me. And regular AP round will finish the sure meal and or damage whoever comes around the corner. Thought that that might have enough oomph after going through the walls to still get the sure meal, but it turned out not to be the case. But I cleared the wall away anyway and got the sure meal with the reload because he's too busy driving around. So, 59.15, do damage the tracks, um, keep an eye on him, he'll be important later. Uh, Ram 2, nice side shot. He is backing up, um, but we finish him off before he uh, does any harm. And then I spot the IS and I think, uh, okay, he's probably AFK. Um, or he's a base camper and might not be very good at what he does. So I'm going to go over here. We're, we're two tanks up. It's not a problem. Um, our guys will be mopping up there. And I probably wouldn't catch up with them anyway. So off we go. Uh, and if nothing else, that the fact that I'm shooting at this guy down here. Um, if he spots me. Which I have no idea whether he does or not. Because I don't have six cents in this tank. Uh, then it might draw some of their attention up the side of the map. And then I notice, hang on, we're only our tank ahead. And then I begin to think maybe I should leave and go and help the rest of my team. And then we're a tank down. And I think, oh, feck it, might as well finish this game anyway. Um, we're two tanks down, we're three tanks down. 
Um, two versus five. Hmm. Okay, well, I've just killed the IS, so somebody knows that I'm up here, but surely the rest of them will go for our uh, cap circle. I mean, this is World of Tanks. Normally, people just drive relentlessly towards the cap circle, and irrespective of what happens behind them, they ignore it. Right? But I'm not going to drive through the centre of the town, because I might meet more than one tank at the time, and that wouldn't be good. So here we have KV-2, Grand, we get rid of him. Oh my... Well, uh, Jackson, not too bad. Very good tank destroyer, but close in, knife fighting like this with a heavy tank. My money's on the Tiger. Um, crap, he's damaged my ammo, but I still have a repair kit. Right, ammo's back up. Oh god, no, Cromwell. Fortunately, the Cromwell drives off the cliff. Does more damage to him than I would have done, and we finish him off, and there's the last remaining tank, the 5916. I miss that shot, he misses that shot. And I make uh, first of several mistakes, really. I start chasing him. Now, I must admit the blood was up a bit, and I thought, yeah, you know, the instinct was to chase, but a heavy tank chasing a light tank is never really going to do any good. So. I'm coming around. I thought, you know, he's going to come around. He's going to start picking at me from different directions. There he is. No, he's... He's going to go this way, is he? Is he not? Where is he? There he is. Right, yeah. Okay, we got him. Like, we got a nice, decent hit there. So, and then I continue on the pursuit. Now, this was a huge, huge mistake because, um... There's no way I can catch him. In a pursuit between a heavy tank and a light tank, the terms of the engagement are being dictated by the light tank. I can't catch him, I can't make him fight me other than when he wants to. Um, and he obviously doesn't want to fight me where my gun is pointed, which is uh, understandable enough. But I rather foolishly continued the pursuit, um, and then around this time I decided, yeah, no, you know, this isn't actually a good idea. But I've got an ally down here on cap circle, don't I? Uh, it still hadn't quite occurred to me that this guy is actually AFK. I'm pretty sure he's AFK. Or if he does, he's a really patient dude uh, because that tank doesn't move. So around this point, I'm really sure that this guy's AFK um, but that light tank is probably around here somewhere um, and I don't want him picking off the AFK tank and then I get shot uh, no he's not over there, he's over there so I screw up again here because I just track him, I don't anticipate um, I'm just reacting don't anticipate his movements way too late with that shot. That was actually really neat shooting to snap a shot off traveling that speed uh, across that gap. Um, it was nicely done. Um, kudos to you. At this point I was wondering really how to bring this battle to a resolution. How am I going to um, get the fight on my terms? I really uh, need to start doing something else. Uh, what I'm doing isn't working. The initiative is totally with the other player. I need another plan. I need to make him come to me and make him fight on my terms. So I think, okay, what if I go to his cap circle? Uh, obviously, the AFK guy is no good to me. Um, there's no effective way of making use of him. But if I go to his cap circle, then he's going to have to come to me, right? I don't want to drive out in the open, I don't want to drive on the high ground, I don't want to give him any kind of long range snapshot or an opportunity to use his superior camouflage and view range and shoot me from distances where I can't see him. Which is why I'm kind of driving the long way around and keeping to low ground and keeping between the buildings as much as possible. Um, he can still pop out from behind me and stuff like that. And I don't have six cents, so he could spot me and I wouldn't know uh, unless the tank gun, unless I was looking in the direction he was spotting me from. But I come around, I say, right, there's some low ground in that cap circle. Maybe I'll be down low enough that when he gets to shoot me, um, I'll have the opportunity of shooting back. 
I don't know much about this tank actually. The 5916 is a tank that I know very, very little about. But um, other than any time I've encountered it, it seems to be a moderately formidable little machine. So I don't know how long the aim time is. I don't know what kind of gun depression it has. Um, I'm not even sure how effective the ammunition is. He's had reasonable success in penetrating me. Um, now, not sure if this was the best spot to pick. Maybe I'd have been better off uh, staying closer to the cliffs there on my right. Because that might have, might have been a bit lower and it might have forced him to come closer and it might have reduced the number of directions that he could have come at me from. I'm not altogether sure. But I didn't know what to expect really. I thought that he'd be coming at me from kind of to my right. Um, I didn't think he'd come at me along the... Um, the one line so to speak because I thought there was a reasonable chance that I might spot him as he crested the dunes to get into that area um, the more I think about it actually I think I'd probably be better off um, further to my left in the low ground there rather than where I am um, you would have had fewer choices about which direction to come at me from I take the hit at the back of the turret when I'm not looking and uh, very nicely done um, that was a very quick snapshot and he didn't actually have to come over the ridge too often so he must have reasonable gun depression on that thing and a pretty sh snappy aim time as well which I didn't actually expect I knew he'd done a lot of snapshots earlier on but they were at very very close ranges um, I didn't think it was not sure where that tank is from I thought it was either Russian or Chinese but um, and I wasn't expecting that kind of um, performance from it but anyway I had gotten this one wrong um, and I should probably have left the cap circle at this point in time but to be honest with you I didn't know what to do um, I was completely lost for um, options at this point And I didn't know what he was going to do next, but I knew I was in trouble. Uh, at this point, I was actually expecting to lose the game. Um, that he was going to take me out. And he puts another one. So he stayed there. Uh, so, okay, right, I have an opportunity here. He's going to peek again. Uh, if I can get the gun depression low enough, am I okay here? I thought I was low enough there, but I wasn't. I needed to actually pull forward another bit. The gun was, the gun was a little bit too high. But I managed to get a shot into him and he's leaving. Now it's obvious now that he's leaving, which is why I pursue. I was using high explosives because um, I thought that it's a light tank, there's a reasonable chance that I might get a penetration. No idea what the armor is like, nothing either, but uh, I just thought there was a chance that I get a penetration. And if not, I might knock out a driver. Or crew members or otherwise slow him down enough to make the fight a bit more equal. Um, because at this stage of the game I need every advantage I can get. However, we're running out of time and I need a new plan. Capping isn't going to work. I have enough time to do it. But he doesn't have enough time to cap. He's not likely to get back to my cap circle in time. Um, to cap out, even ignoring the uh, Churchill. So if I can stay out of his clutches for long enough... We can win by total damage done. Now I was expecting to lose. Uh, but that shot happened. And that was very fortunate. And we... He peaks again now. I think I'm in with a chance. Because if he peaks again, I have him. Uh, and there he is. And whoever's fastest on the trigger wins. But to get back to what I was saying. The Churchill was still alive. That's about five or 600 hit points. Um... As long as I could stay alive long enough that even if he killed me, he couldn't take down the Churchill, we might actually have one on um, hit points damage done. However, we won the old fashioned way. Seven destroyed, high caliber, uh, top gun devastator and a steel wall. I came top by experience, but Disco Partisan Zero, that was a damn good game. 
Well played, sir. In fact, such was the pressure that I felt under that I never actually looked at my own uh, breakdown of my own performance. So, I yes, did a lot of damage. Um, because, yes, that was the AFK, the Stewart Meal, the VK, the Ram. Cromwell B barely touched him. Uh, he more or less wiped himself out the Jackson, yes. And um, four shots into Disco Partisan Zero. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did playing it and even re-watching it. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, catch you again soon.